In this video, we're going to show you how to perform the PORCS test to diagnose medial and lateral epicondylalgia. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi, and welcome back to PhysioTutors. One of the most common causes of elbow pain is epicondylalgia with pain at the lateral epicondyle occurring at least three times as often than on the medial side. Next to the common Cosen's test, Golfer's elbow test, Mills test and Kaplan's test, Polkinghorne et al. in the year 2002 came up with a more functional and easy to use test for both conditions. No studies have evaluated the so-called Polk's test so far, which is why we give it a questionable clinical value in practice. The mechanism of action of the Polk's test is very straightforward. When the hand grasps an object, tension is placed on both the flexors and extensors of the wrist. The motion of lifting the object aggravates the tension on the primary affected muscle group with resulting mechanical strain at the sensitized musculotendinous attachment sites. Phase 1 of the Polk's test is designed to stress the wrist extensors and supinators such as the extensor carpi radialis brevis and longus, the brachioradialis and the supinator. To perform the test, the patient is in sitting position and is instructed to lift an object of approximately 2.5 kilograms or 5 pounds. In the original description, a heavy book with the elbow flexed and the forearm pronated, so with the palm facing down. This test is positive for lateral epicondylalgia if pain is felt in the lateral epicondyl as a result of the strain imposed upon the attachment site of the extensor supinator muscles which originate in the lateral epicondyl, supracondylar line of the humerus and a portion of the proximal ulna. A patient with medial epicondylalgia will have no problem picking up an object this way. Phase 2 of the Polk test is designed to stress the wrist flexors and pronators such as the flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, flexor digitorum superficialis, palmaris longus, pronator quadratus and pronator teres. To perform the test, the patient is instructed to pick up the book again, but now with a flexed elbow and a forearm supinated, so with the palm facing up. This test is positive for medial epicondylalgia if pain is felt in the medial epicondyl as a result of the strain imposed upon the attachment site of the flexor pronator muscles, which originate in the medial epicondyl. A patient with lateral epicondylalgia in turn will have no problem picking up an object this way. This test is positive for medial epicondylalgia if pain is felt in a medial epicondyl as a result of the strain imposed upon the attachment site of the flexor and pronator muscles, which originate in the medial epicondyl. A patient with lateral epicondylalgia, in turn, will have no problem picking up an object this way. Okay, this was our video on the PORCS test. If you're curious about more common tests for lateral and medial epicondylalgia, click on the playlist right next to me. If you want to dive deeper, into clinical reasoning from screening to treatment of the most common pathologies of the upper and lower limb, check out our Extremity online course. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.